Hey guys, and welcome to A Cast of Salt, uh, hosting today, uh, it's me, Ben, hello, to my left, I was trying to think of something insulting, but I have nothing yet, but I won't say anything nice, it's Adam. I'm on your right. Yeah. I was about to say you. On my you're... right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> on my right. That's, that's why. On my left is lovely Ben and Tower Sheet, we have. <laughs> Is a cupboard, my, li- my linen, linen cupboard here, and chilling to in the middle. Uh, for those listening, I can't see my hand gestures. We have Ryan. Yo, how y'all I'm, doing? I'm back. You're back. It it's has been a, been a while. Yeah. God damn. What's happened? So to summarize, um, new job, which I start next week. Congratulations! Uh, yay! Woo. Uh, expecting a baby. Yay! yay. Double congratulations. Yes. Um. And yeah, just general life stuff. Ryan um, adulting. That's what's happening. Yeah, pretty much. Daddy yeah. Worthington. <laughs> <laughs> and change of topic. Great. Moving on. <laughs> I'm so glad Ben's not here. <laughs> oh boy. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. oh boy. All right, Adam, anything from you? Anything? Any... Uh, I can't. I Can can't... you top that? I can't top. I can't top bringing another human life into this world. Sorry, Ben. No. I'm very Dis- I'm, a- I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I've been playing video games again though. So that's you have fun. been playing. Video yeah, yeah. Games. I started what's, playing. What's new? What video games have you been playing? Um, I was playing control. I've been playing Control, which is a game that came out from uh, Remedy. Okay. Which is um, I'll just make sure that is right. I think it's Remedy. Um, they're the the guys behind um. Video games like Alan Wake, Max Payne. Right, okay. Um, so, you know, every game with a gritty uh, a gritty hard, protagonist. A hard line. That, that, that talks in a film noir <laughs> over the top. That's, that's Constantly them. smoking a cigarette. Also, yeah. this game also does that too. Um, it, it's a fun game. Mm. It's, it's, uh, it's very weird. But it's like, it's a basic kind of third person shooter mm. with, um, with like telekinetic powers and yeah. It's pretty fun. If you like those kind of like those kind of story based games, it's quite good. Mm. And it was like uh, fifty, I think it's fifty bucks. Uh, okay, a bit less than full price. Um, what um platforms? Uh, so it's on. It is on Xbox and PS4. Um, it's also on PC mm-hmm. or through the Epic Game Store. So okay. I have it on PC. Um. Apparently as well, the game, I haven't been playing it on this, but it's got a bit of attention because it's one of the first games to really use ray tracing well. All right. Um, I don't have a card capable of ray oh, tracing, well, ray so tracing. I don't have that. But the game looks nice anyway. But apparently you can, if you have the latest 20, 80. 2080 or whatever, then you've got ray tracing. And it looks, it's supposed to look amazing. Really cool, fancy shit. Okay. You know? um, yeah, it's a fun game though. It's, it, it's, it's a good action game and also has times of being legitimately pretty spooky so yeah it's um it's it's a cool game so um, it's supposed to be like a th- like a horror it's not no, horror, it's, but like it's a otherworldly jump scary oh no of... it's not it's not horror okay or, it, it's like some things are just kind of like weird kind of monstrosity kind of okay. like like there's a thing that's kind of possessed people right and they'll be kind of like misshapen and, it, and misformed it, it, yeah it morphs them a little it's bit it's not like how dead space works yeah but it's but there's some like sometimes the environments and the way things kind of drop in yeah. will give you like a bit of a like, oh fuck, and you'll be like kind of on your toes. On, on, on edge. But it's not okay. it's not like prey or like which are straight up like horror yeah. things. You yeah. know, it's funny, um we're talking about like like spooky horror stuff. I actually read the other day that Silent Hill was based on a real world location in which they had a dump near near a uh, town mm-hmm. and they the dump was getting full, so they decided yeah. to burn it. Turns out that the dump was actually the an old uh, coal mine. <laughs> and and caused and caused um uh like the underground coal seams to catch fire to catch fire yeah. and Holy shit. they're still burning right the way uh they really? they tried they tried like creating like fire breaks underground sort of like, like the equivalent of a fire break didn't work yeah. um and it got to the point where like um uh, one of the big events was like a, a like a kid like a fourteen year old kid um was exploring his grandparents' backyard saw some like steam or something coming yeah. up from from where there was like a tree. He went over to investigate, boom. Uh, and boom! Like suddenly, a huge boom. column of steam column of seen across steam. the entire entire town. So the whole place is like kind of like covered in like steam and volatile and, and volatile, oh. and it's like kind of volatile. It's got that. Yeah, so that's apparently what Silent Hill was based on. Oh, okay. 
there you go. Yeah. And still Ooh. burning. Wow. A pretty well. Uh, that would yeah. be impressive. It was. It was. Yeah. Built in the. Well, sorry. I should say the dump was set on fire. I think in the sixties. Yeah. And it was burning well into the eighties and nineties. I don't know if it's still, still burning. Going, but yeah. yeah. Jeez. Okay. So underground I, fire. I have also picked up another few games as mm. well that I have dabbled in, but I have not finished. Untitled Goose Game as well, because it's, everyone got in on that shit. Yeah. And I was like, why the hell not? Why not? I don't Lion, like. I don't, doesn't approve. No, no, no. I just. I am so, just so so, so goddamn sick of hearing about that game. It's I'll be so honest. good. I know Support it looks Australian amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It looks it looks pretty fun, but like um, it's so fun. Uh, those sort of games always remind me of like you know like Goat Sim, Goat Simulator, yeah. and just those sort of random stupid games, postal, kind of a little bit. You yeah. know, I just like it because this like, game. It, it is literally like a sandbox, right? But you the run di- the difference about this between that and something like Postal is that this game is so wholesome. Yeah. Like, but you, it, it's it, it is honestly like Grand Theft Auto, but like the most wholesome version of yeah. Grand Theft Auto, because like, like you are there you to steal- sow chaos and be a little asshole. Like and but be a complete most... psychopath to everything. Yeah. But the worst thing you do is you like you steal, steal a man's someone's hat. glasses or a hat or you something. You're just like in your face, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like I <laughs> running off. Or like I got a secret in the first map. I got a secret achievement. Mm. Oh, a secret. Cause you have a to do list of things you need to fuck with people. Yeah. How how to do things. Um, and I got a secret one because I figured out I I managed to lure a get a guard like a a gardener outside of the garden. Yeah. And. And, and then, then lock him out I, of and it I or took something. his keys <laughs> and then lured him outside and then shut the door. And he's like, oh, fuck, I can't get back in. And I was like, like ah, in your face. <laughs> I was like, it's, yeah. it, is, it is fucking fantastic. It's just like the pleasure tri- and joy you get from doing trivial, it. Trivial, <laughs> like, <laughs> just the most pranks. Trivial pranks and like just inconveniences. Yeah, like, yeah. That's, what, that's what you're there to do. Just cause people inconveniences. I also love it as well because it is Australian. Um, but it makes me very much think of our university days as mm. well. Mm. And there was a cam- on campus. There was a the, the there was evil, done, evil duck. There was one evil duck. Was it a duck or a goose? It was, was, a, it was, it was a, duck. a duck. It was, it was a, a duck. big duck. But it was this huge duck. Yeah, and it had this massive like red kind of bill face. Yeah, and it was a motherfucker. It terrorized. It would just look people like you and it- you. <laughs> it terrorized the campus. Everybody there loved and feared that fucking <laughs> respected <duck>. that dog. <laughs> it, was, it ruled with an iron fist. Yeah, it was just like I want to sit. On, I want to sit on the main grass area and eat my lunch. And the duck's like, "Fuck you, you know." Like, this is like, my <laughs> my domain. Like, yeah. You're coming into my world. They actually erected a statue at died a couple yeah, of years ago. A few years back, they put <laughs> a statue up. Statue. Okay, you know you've made it's it. So good. <laughs> when when you die, people. Like, they will make, fully a statue. make a statue of you. Yeah. It's not like you, you, you have some duck. legacy that forces them to make a statue. You, you, that that duck has no say anymore. <laughs> but people made a goddamn statue of it. That's it was, that duck has it was out of so fear good. that it would haunt their ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, but yeah, um, but that 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 taps into me of like how perfect it is to have this goose game. Yeah, it, like yeah. it's so reminiscent of like just fucking. Chaos, like complete chaos. The fear that we lived in so, during our uni so days. So good. Um, okay. Highly recommend it. So I, I'll probably be the least um, um, updatey in terms of mm. what, what 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 I have been up to. In the sense of I've barely played any games in the last few weeks. I'm looking for new games to start playing mm. again, though. Um, I'll probably get into the Switch a little bit more. I've kind of gone a little bit quiet on that. I started playing yeah. the Messenger. I didn't oh, get very boy, you're going to love that. I, I'm enjoying it, but you're gonna for, love that. for whatever reason, I've stopped over the last couple of That's weeks. That's a great game. If you've got a Switch, everyone, play the Messenger. Yes. Buy it. It's super cheap and they give you free DLC. It's fucking great. Yes. Yeah. It's it's so far so very good. Game's very um, fun. What I have been doing, though, is I've been watching a shit ton of Power. If any, if either of you know that, it's like this... It's on we should get heads. This is supposed to be an audio podcast. We yeah. Yeah. Both it, it, yes. No, we haven't seen it. It's on Stan, which... It also adds to why you probably haven't why seen it. I haven't seen it. Um, but it's like a drug dealer, DEA, federal, kind of like just a... I don't want to say... Not, it's definitely not like Narcos. Definitely not like Narcos. But it's very much a, a, right. a show about selling drugs, um, trying to make it out of the streets and shit like that. Mm. Um, and then the main character has relationships with the... Federal prosecutor, the whole shebang. Um, but it's actually pretty good. Like, it's 
just kind of got me hooked over the last couple of weeks. So that's that's kind of been my little space. But I'm gonna I'm kind of getting over it. Like there's still a season to go, and I'm getting over it now. So mm. I'm looking for new games to play. So I will be checking out some of the stuff that you've mentioned. But if anybody listening has any recommendations as well very very keen to to get some thrown my way or you could hit us or up can, on our discord yeah that too yes. join, join our discord um, join the discord because we love talking with people and we do all video game recommendations and stuff okay um i think we've kind of waffled on around our sorts of happenings for yeah, a, let's enough just, let's jump in and jump in the title of this video is straight into the the meat of it um Jeez. so anyone that's been online for the last few weeks it's like, we can't say we're going to do a gaming podcast, a gaming news podcast, and not cover and not, what we're about to talk yes. about. It's dominated the fucking news cycle dominated, for like at least a week at this point. Um, and, Every news story. And, and to be fair, it has been quite a big piece of news. It's also worth it. It's, it's also, worth, it's also, it's also not about. just gaming. It's not just gaming. Well. Exactly right. There's, there's a lot more to it. It's on the surface level, very much a gaming news topic that we're going to discuss, but it is very, very political very very social it's a it's it's a big deal god um, carl would be carl would be so disappointed that he, that he if he was having to talk on this podcast yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, we have to get political we are going to have to get political on this one um, <laughs> so to kind of get to that point we're going to be talking about the whole blizzard china um fiasco that has been well, happening in hong of, kong which let's say is probably the centerpiece it of, is the centerpiece of that. um um, fiasco that's been happening over the last two weeks or so. Yep. Yeah. Um, anyone keen to give the summary? I'll give the executive summary. Yes, please. Uh, which is that Hong Kong is in the midst of protests uh, over encroaching uh, communism and in- influence from China. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's the broader context. Uh, a prominent Hong Kong Hearthstone streamer uh, ended a stream by donning a mask and shouting something like, liberate Hong Kong. Uh, it's I can't li- remember the liberate exact. Hong Kong revolution of our time. Yes, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. Um, the two people that he was casting with ducked under their chairs. They didn't want to be um, associated. associated with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blizzard's response to said stream was to ban that player for a year and mm-hmm. revoke all his current prize winnings, Correct. which or he, he, the prize winning of that or competition that event. or that, that event. event. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, well, it was, it, was all, it was all the money that they had currently withheld from him, which, yeah, mm. was an ex- a substantial amount from prize winnings and stuff. Correct. So, um, as you can imagine, Blizzard, an ostensibly American company, uh, you know, something, something free speech, um, kowtowing to uh, Chinese influence yep. by immediately jumping down this guy's throat, uh, was not seen as a non-political move yes um oh, mm. sorry just to interrupt real quickly they also fired the casters oh yes sorry they, they, they fired, fired the casters mm. they said we are no longer working with these people yeah Correct. so they sorry. they went over and above not just the person that was involved but the two people that anyone were that was on camera at the time gets yeah. punished yeah um so yeah so that's caused rightfully caused some controversy mm-hmm. um within uh, the well, the wider gaming community, but specifically the Hearthstone uh, community. Correct. Mm. A lot of people have quit the game out of protest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Blizzard at some point made it harder to to to, to quit to the game, quit the game, um, or cancel their account or accounts. cancel accounts and stuff. Allegedly, allegedly, let's, let's allegedly, sure alleg- it is allegedly, yes. it is allegedly. Um, it, it, it could also be simply because everyone was quitting on such mass force that their authentication methods could not just, handle or yeah. did not expect the strain on the system. And yeah, fucking that's, that's the other side of things. They probably weren't <laughs> expecting it. Um, which is also a good thing because it means that they were under so much pressure. Their service fucking crashed mm. from people leaving their services. Yeah. So yeah. So then. Obviously, heaps of riots, protest well, not riots in, in 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 America, but just protests and stuff. Um, Blizzard then sort of backtracked a little bit by mm. saying, "Well, they're going to reduce the ban to six months." Well, so here's here's some things in the middle. Though. Okay, yeah. So, I was trying to give the the summary, oh, yeah, right? right? So okay, the summary yeah. is yeah. So that that's I'm just saying everything from Blizzard's side. That's what they did. They reduced the ban to six months, gave him his prize money. The streamer has basically said that he's not sure if he's going to return to Hearthstone. Um, mm. And that's pretty much the the overall story, but there's a lot of stuff in between. So yeah, let's get on. So with that. some so some other little bits and pieces of this story as well is that they Blizzard came out and their first when when they initially did their ban, they said this has no, we have no, no. This is not because of what he said. This is from this is where he said it, and 
and the fact that we needed to focus on our games and we don't And this to, wasn't a political and This issue. wasn't a political statement. This is not a political statement from us, mm. which is wrong because it really by is. standing up to someone making a political statement, you yourself are making a political statement. That is not difficult to understand. Mm. Um, okay. So when so they had that statement that came out. In China, they had a much heavier statement come out and mm-hmm. there in the Chinese statement through So this um, is Blizzard this China. Is Blizzard, by the way. This is half this is the Hearthstone account mm-hmm. in China run by NetEase, which is partnered with Blizzard. Mm-hmm. In saying that though, because it's still Blizzard property, Blizzard would not sign off on this unless they were having this statement. Okay with it. Net, it's not like, oh well that's mm-hmm. NetEase, that's not Blizzard. They would not be able to say that unless it was Blizzard gave the given up. a thumbs up. Hmm. And the statement... Basic- which, will, which will, if we remember, we'll try and link in the description. Yeah. So the statement basically... Well, it's a very s- small statement that they made here. They just said, you know, we're very angry. It was, it's much harshly worded. They said, we're very angered and disappointed at what happened at the event. Do not condone it. Um, we also highly object to the spreading of personal political beliefs in this manner. Effectively, immediately, we've banned the contestant from events and terminated work with the broadcasters. Notice they also didn't say a year. They just mm. said banned, banned, as in like, they wanted just to make it in, look like indefinite. we've indefinitely banned yeah. him, for one. And then the last statement, the last sentence, which is so damning, we always respect and defend the pride of our country. So that's very clearly, we are made, this is, this is because he made a political statement offending China. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was why it was. It wasn't the fact that it was a political statement. It was the fact that it was against, China. against China. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it seems to he me... Could, he could have said, fuck Trump, and they wouldn't have cared. No. And, 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 and that's the thing as well. Like, there have been a whole bunch of other things recently where, um, where Blizzard and a lot of other places will have had, like, huge pride days and, and, and had these huge... Um, events for very political for, topics. Well, for for events that a moment that are considered political. Mm. Yes, like we're not saying it for a second that you should be like we're not really politicizing the fact that people should be able to live the way they want to live. That's that's ridiculous. But in it saying is, that, it that is, it is a political considered topic. a political topic yeah. and is considered something that is up for debate and people um and people it is divisive for some, for some people. Mm. For, well, considering the... the- for, like, the thing is, if, if Blitz Chung yelled trans rights matter into into the camera, Blizzard would be giving him, like, a round of applause and being like, saying, yes, that's very good. Because the thing is, that doesn't offend... That, that won't necessarily offend China. That won't offend their other political markets. So they're more than happy for you to stand up for something politically, but not unless it affects their bottom line. Yeah. The second it affects their bottom line... You're getting fucking censored, and like that's, that's that's very simple. So I think that's the key call out from yeah. Blizzard's perspective that I want to make sure that I, at least that I see as their biggest driving motivator. It's not specifically mm. because they love China and they want to support that regime. No, they don't. It's not specifically that they feel so strongly about this point, or but they that like they money. feel that like- Hong Kong is a very touchy subject that they don't want to be a part of or whatever. That's not the problem for Blizzard. Blizzard is a business. And they want money. They want to make money. And they don't want to make just some money. They want to make all, all the money. money. Yeah. So with a huge substantial amount of their revenue coming from the China Chinese market, if something was to happen on their watch that impacts that potential revenue, say getting their games banned or whatever the case in China because mm. of something someone said and they didn't they didn't respond accordingly, that's not cool for them. They want to keep that revenue stream going, potentially even grow it. So in their eyes, they're saying this person making a statement about... Um, affects our bottom line, effectively. It, yes, exactly mm. right. Um, about Hong Kong, about the current dicey um, political situation in Hong Kong Mm. May, it, it may not have an instant impact, but it will have an impact on on their bottom line. And, and that's that's always the case. They're yeah. always weighing up the pros and cons of any situation. Yeah. And anything that looks look looks risky to their revenue, they will respond. Yeah. And I think it's worth noting that Blizzard are not the only company that do this. They no, are just the most public. No, exactly. Well, well, and the thing is now, what I was going to say as well is that I the first thing that I thought of when I saw a lot of this stuff is it sort of a stark reminded me that corporations are just never your friends 
and you should never treat them as such and you should never treat them as people because the whole reason because people work at corporations and those people have their own personal opinions mm. but the the business policy and set by the owners and boards of people they do not represent people Everybody and individual. they do not represent the comp- the individuals that work yeah. at the company and they sure as fuck don't really care about anything that doesn't make, make them the money, money. Exactly because right. and and no matter what because and so for a more local australian example of this is um when we had the um when we have like it happens every time when we have Mardi Gras mm-hmm. come on, mm-hmm. but it was r- in massive full uh, swing when we had the marriage plebiscite. Yeah, and all of these companies came out and put up Supporting, rainbow rainbow let's things this, and said, support, support, support. "We want this, we want this." But a lot of those companies were the ones like a lot of that Funding stuff no. is mm. all the ones pushing to have the plebiscite in the first place. Mm-hmm. And the reason they wanted the plebiscite is because then they could publicly say yes, yes. Yeah. so they could then get street cred. Mm. Like, not because that they fucking cared. Yeah. Like, if, if, if people cared, we would have passed it in the government immediately and had it done with one vote and put it in and it would be law. Yeah. And because that's the right thing to do. Instead, we had to go through a whole period of having it's to have this publicity. fucking thing yeah. demonizing people in the media because because some people wanted to be able to say that they aligned with them and they were woke. Yeah. They aren't woke. Because, and, and like, I, I posted something in our Discord recently as well, is that, like, Twitter... Sorry, Wendy's has a great Twitter account. Mm. They're fucking great. You can't deny it's how good their corporate Twitter account is. as all hell. The person that runs our Twitter account is not Wendy's, however. Yeah. They are not the whole of Wendy's. No. And... It is. Recently it's also ca- funny when Wendy's like in. I think tennis. I think Tennessee. I want to say. Yeah. Um, oh, I think it's wider than just. No, Tennessee. it's in one like, in one state. Yeah. They got fucking slapped with like a fine, which was also a piss weak fine mm. as well. But they got slapped with a fine for like Underpaying. hundreds of uh, of violations of um. It was, it was sixty six um child labor violations, mm. and you're like. Cool, yeah, real woke of, yeah. of Wendy's. Like, so, like, it's just funny to think, like, oh, yeah, th- they they only jump on board. And the thing is, companies only started jumping on board with the Pride stuff when it became, when it, when the sea change became popular to do so. Correct. Yeah. They were not fighting for it. Correct. When, when, when it wasn't when popular. When it was a yeah. dangerous when, thing to do. When it was a dangerous when thing to was, say. Yeah, mm-hmm. People, exactly right. they, companies will only jump on board when it is a safe thing. Yeah. So, if this turns to a point where it's getting really unpopular to do so, Blizzard might turn around and then cut ties and say, well, no, we, like, we, we understand that human rights need to be respected. Mm. So, it, and, and then they'll make it look like they're the martyr by losing their profits yeah, and doing all this stuff, doing but this, they'll only yeah. do it when it's convenient for them to and do because so. because it will yeah. make them more money going yes. forward. Because people this, will come back to them. So, I, like, think, I think we have touched on this a couple of yeah. times in our previous podcast as well, is... They're, it's always about that bottom line. Even things around when we're going, oh shit, we're so disappointed that they've put in another loot box system or... Um, they don't care. NBA 2K. They don't care <laughs> about you. They don't care. Has made this into a casino game rather than a basketball game. It does, None of that matters to them. They care about making money. That's their, soul, that's a, their drive a, and a purpose. Develop, a developer who's making a game will care about their game. Mm, yeah. And the, and the, I'm sure the developers on big AAA titles, they care about the things they're making. The CEO, Bobby Kotick, doesn't give a single goddamn fuck about any content in any one of his games. It's honestly because... He does it's, not care. It's a the thing is, at that C level as well, right? Like at the, at the CEO level and stuff. These... Um, business leaders mm. right they come in to a cool company right they they basically trade goodwill for profit right mm-hmm. and then they move on they move on to the next company right and they're ceos they're not like he's not like yeah. a video games person he's yeah. he'll, he'll be a ceo of a bank or he'll be a ceo of some other company yep so exactly. it won't it won't, won't might not even stay in the industry they're- because these people like they only care about money mm-hmm. yeah and the fir- the first the more the people identify they know that business they is- study business it's business for them so which is good because this comes up to a next point of what this happened in the next story Correct. is what the fans did which was a fucking genius goddamn move okay so one is the boycott which you know a lot very of people standard. deleting their accounts yeah. and going, it's good. I don't people want to are holding not only did people say, well, we're not going to play WoW. We're not mm. going to play this. They were like, and not even we're going to cancel our subscription or put it on hold. People are deleting their accounts. Mm. Years of data. They're like, well, I'm going to make this so hard for me to get back in because I don't want to. 
I don't be want to any part of this. Yeah. Mm. To be like, and it's not, maybe. And it's not just Hearthstone, it's any Blizzard, yeah, Act- yeah. Activision Blizzard property. So, WoW, Overwatch, Hearthstone, people are just like quitting and just, yeah. and, and literally typing in because there's a, a, a little why, box that says, say, Why what, you what are you cancelling your yeah. service? And people are like, Fuck you, respect Hong Kong, yeah. respect human rights. Human rights. Um, and I also had a chat with Carl as well because I said, like, Carl is the <laughs> Blizzard, Blizzard boy in consumer <laughs> in this group. And he quit Hearthstone immediately. Yeah. He's like, fuck this. I'm um, not, I'm not ha- standing for having this. Having said that, and this is a point that I made to the guys yeah. a little earlier on. While it's very, um, like, pleasing, and um, we're quite happy to see a lot of people being so passionate and feeling so strongly about mm. this that they're going to the extent of deleting their accounts, of taking action to kind of say like just tell to show blizzard that they do not agree with what blizzard yeah, is they doing. care if you as an individual though don't do something along those lines that's fine there's nothing wrong with it that. doesn't make there you is, a bad person by keeping your blizzard zero account issue with that. That- it, it is a service it is a game that you enjoy just because they are doing something that you disagree with or that they are doing something that's morally not great um, doesn't mean you have to then take action to like lose something that's important or of value to you. In, in to, saying that though, that if um, you still, the, but if you still care means. about that thing, you, there's a lot of other ways Correct. that you can then support. So, you know, and that just takes a quick search to exactly. think like, how could you possibly support um, charities or groups or in specifically relation to Hong Kong that are helping people Correct. in that area? Mm. Um yeah, there's plenty of things that you can do to help out. Um, yeah. A boycott is not the only methodology. Correct. That is brings me to point two of another way to fuck Blizzard. And this this and, and this actually came out because I saw the original tweet that sparked the idea. Mm. And the, the tweet was basically from a protester in Hong Kong saying that they great like they appreciated so much um, people putting pressure on Blizzard as a example to other companies. Mm-hmm. Um and to say to and they're like we're so appreciative of the support the people the gamers are showing us however they they are expecting this mm. and they know that there's so much money to be made in China that it's worthwhile that they will accept the people leaving mm. yeah what we should do is if we can corrupt a mascot if we can, if we can start getting um, Blizzard property censored in China, then they then, start losing money. Then they lose. Then they start losing their ties to China, and that will hurt them more than anything else. Correct. So what and they then, do? And so what people responded with, okay, then that sounds like a really good idea. What should we do? And they went, May from Overwatch. Yeah. So immediately turned her into a sign of the Hong Kong resistance. Yeah. This is fucking perfect. I, yeah. And then. Yes. The art is the May, art, we, by the way, is like a Chinese character. Is a Chinese yes. character. Yes. One Chinese character. Yes. In that game. Yes. And then, um, yeah, and they basically dressed her up with like covering her eye, one eye, which is a symbol for the mm-hmm. the resistance. Um, having like the Hong Kong flowers and the face mask and the face mask and having Hong Kong flowers. They even over they her even gear. edited um, May's short. Like the short video, the short um, yeah. story, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to show her trying to get news on the Hong Kong rebellion. Yeah, yeah. From like as a yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Um, and basically, it just was relentless in in as much pro Hong Kong material in and like literally pulling out flyers and people were spotting flyers in the Hong Kong protests we're using with May on them. Yeah, yeah. And uh. So that went like so. No bans, nothing has happened on that front yet, but it has put enormous pressure on them. So much so that um, Blizzard then cancelled a Nintendo crossover with for, as Overwatch, Overwatch is coming to Switch, yeah. and they cancelled the promotional the promotional um, event. event. Um, I believe there was an Overwatch, uh, another Overwatch event that got cancelled as well. Um, uh, so yeah, they're like, really they're been really suffering. Like that that did so much damage to. Well, I think they're and freaking the final- out. They're freaking out, thinking like. Are we going to actually? Are they going to censor May like or Overwatch or as a Overwatch whole? Overwatch as a whole, in like China. another thing that people are doing or talking about doing. Yeah, uh, 
BlizzCon brilliant. is in a couple of weeks. Yeah. It's like one week, isn't it? It's like a week. It's like a week. And people are saying that so, they're, they're gonna either be... going to turn up as uh, dressed up as May with Liberate Hong Kong or oh, they're going to turn up Winnie, as with Winnie, Winnie the, the Pooh. Pooh. Yeah. Yeah. Because Winnie the Pooh is also censored in China because of comparisons that Chinese people were making with Between. Winnie the Pooh with their president. Their yes. illustrious leader. Which is hilarious because he gets so fucking offended <laughs> over like it's Winnie the Pooh like who like it's such a it's it's a loved it's almost character. a compliment yeah it's, it's so bizarre it's a loved character yeah it's a beloved character known for being such a wholesome yeah a wholesome character yeah but the thing is he gets so offended that people are like well but, if it offends him we're just gonna keep fucking calling him it, it's it's more so that it's a physical comparison more than yeah. anything well, there, I think I think the first time I saw it mm. was there was a photo of Xi Jinping walking with then President Obama right like like oh, yeah. across a tarmac or something yeah. and it was literally the same shot in the same perspective like, of a Winnie, Winnie the, the Pooh walking with a singer <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Um, I was like, ooh. I, I, I saw this earlier on today. They're, like, you can get, like, masks that are his face, but yellow, like, colorized and made to look oh more like... Oh, my gosh. Toys. Okay, so. yeah. So, yeah, there's, like... So, a lot of that iconography is a lot of how the way that people are now fighting the battle, which, to be honest, is fucking brilliant mm. because that's going to hurt... Blizzard and co- a corporation way more than Blizzard than being like oh accounts and whatnot. yeah we lost a hundred thousand accounts mm. but you know China pays us so much money that we're okay with it so what yeah um but yeah but if they're like we can get banned in China then that's a huge thing that they have to consider yeah. um so so yeah as, as Ryan also mentioned as well that they then um dropped the um the ban. Uh, they dropped the ban they oh. gave him his prize money back mm-hmm. um and said the ban is now down to six months. And the casters are now, instead of being like, we're not working with them at all, they went from down to a six month. Like, we won't be working with them for the next, the six, next months. six months. As well. um, I feel like that's, that's like a trivial sort of response. It's nothing. It's, it's, it's a nothing response in the sense that. They're, tr- they're trying to sweep it on. They're trying to be like, yeah, we, 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 we. The thing is, they double, by saying that, they're doubling down on the fact that they're like, we were, we're right still banning. to ban him. Mm. Because we can't unban him, because that looks weak to China. Yeah. But we'll just, we'll just soften it a little bit, just to try and appease, appease, appease the rest of the world, try to audience. Try to appease the audience a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um. To be, to having said that though, like cutting it down to six months for a like a professional gamer, that's still six months where he can't play. We can't work. He can't work in that regards, and the casters as well. Six months is a long time to be out yeah. of the game. Yeah, um, they'll just pick up another game. Is my opinion. I mean, they they pro- probably could, but to like in anybody's situation, you lose your job. It's like it's stressful. It's yeah, a pain in the ass. Sit and go trying hey, to find another game. What, just then, wait in six months and come back. Fuck no. You, you chances are you won't come back. No, like, you might, but you chances are you've moved on from then. Yeah, because six months is a long time to go. Okay, I'll just wait and then come back in six months time. Um, but to an earlier point we made as well, it's just like. This is this this is Blizzard trying to lock it down, trying to crowd control, trying to just like let's put this let's let's shut this down as quickly as possible, mm. and it has just blown out of proportion. Like they could have just been like, "Hey, it was it was a knee jerk reaction. Mm. We shut off the stream. Um, we felt that it was a it was negative to our image, and we took these actions. We now see that it's wrong." And so we feel that these are more appropriate things. Yeah. And I think that the general population would have taken that much, much better. Just been like, yes, we know that you did something, wasn't great, but you've acknowledged it and you've done something better. Yep. By, by, by doubling down on it and locking down on it to the point of going, it now has people literally trying to find ways to get them banned from an entire country. country yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it, like, it has I, not gone their way. The it has not gone their wanted. way. No, it has not gone their way. Um, okay, so, all of this stuff has happened over the past, like, fucking two, three two, weeks. Two, three weeks, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, it's about least, a month, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, and today, so this morning, rather, for, and as of, what is it, Saturday the 19th in Correct. Australia, Saturday morning, um, so it would be Friday for uh Afternoon. in the US evening, when yeah. this is released mm-hmm. there was a a new letter from Congress 
um, which is very bad because you know that because because this you stuff done good. this stuff this stuff has now it, it's breached it's it, breached well, the gaming it, sphere well, and into the wider but audience. The thing is, it 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 it, or, it or, this story almost immediately breached gamer news mm. and went to CNN, went to like all the major news networks Outlets. in the US. Mm. So immediately it's hit mainstream, which yeah. is not great for Blizzard. And then it's gotten even worse because the government has now responded to this. Yeah. So it's gone to the level of like, this is no longer just a news story that will blow over. The government is now looking at what is going on, yeah. which is like, okay, shit is not good now. Um, so basically, it and it, even worse, it is a bipartisan letter. So there are members of both of sides, parties. both parties, yeah. writing like, to this, you don't- which is very, very bad and <laughs> like very uncommon. Yeah, yeah, it's very uncommon. Yeah. Um. So basically, the letter is addressed to um Bobby Kotick, um the CEO of Activision Blizzard, um and says we write to express our deep concerns about Activision Blizzard's decision to make. Um, Blitz Chong, well, they use his real name here, but uh, forfeit prize money um, and ban him from participating tournaments for a year after voicing vocal support for pro-democracy protests in Hong Kong. This decision is particularly concerning in light of Chinese government gro- Chinese government's growing appetite for pressuring American businesses to help stifle free speech. Mm-hmm. So it kind of goes on, and what it does, the letter actually does, is it actually outlines the 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 story so far that we've already kind of been talking about mm. but what makes it really bad in this case is because this letter is going to get read by a whole bunch of people not gamers yeah so this letter is specifically outlining what has been going on right. so everyone is going to know about yeah the story yeah so this is it like this is only escalating worse and worse and worse yeah. for Activision Blizzard at this yeah. point um and like i said they are kind of the um the the public example of this that there's other companies oh that- there's plenty of examples yeah. i know i know i know but like yeah. i'm just but saying this, this is this is the this is the one that's made them respond but this yeah. is also the most egregious simply because like you can see on their chinese accounts yeah that's like say, they're not like we support china yeah. well there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of stores i know zara is one and a, there's a few others as well there are lists online if you do want to go look at this kind of stuff that um of people being like oh um yeah, sorry, we don't list Taiwan as a country anymore mm. Mm. because China doesn't China like that. Said so. <laughs> so there's a lot of instances of Papa, that, Papa of China that kind of stuff, so. and that is definitely that's definitely censorship. Mm. But this this has gone from a different level of like actively vocal, actively policing free speech mm. and um and any any controversial opinion and shutting it down. Yeah. Um, where a lot of that stuff, there's actually a movie recently, uh, Abominable, that's coming out yep. from DreamWorks. Yep. It's, it's a DreamWorks China, um, uh, 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 like it, they worked with Chinese, yes, Chinese, the DreamWorks office in China, I think, with with the US thing. So the it's set in China, yeah, and there is a. It got banned in Vietnam. This movie's already banned in Vietnam right. because there is a fucking map in the background mm-hmm. of one of the shots of the girl's room, yep. and there's a nine dotted line. I did not know what the nine dotted nine dotted line is. It's, nine- it's, it's Chinese claim over the uh, Chinese Sea, whatever. Yes, it's called. it is. I can't remember what the sea's name Which is, is large part portion of what Vietnam, Vietnam also claims, right? And a lot of other Southeast Asian companies yes. also claim. Yeah. Yes. So, so you- they have it like they had a fucking. They had a map in the background that that basically said that very subtly in these kid child's movie, we own South, we own the South China Sea. Yeah, it's ours. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> so like, this is how much they are pushing their political influence through anything that they touch, they, they, anything they the Chinese government and Ch- like can t- get their hands on, which is pretty much anything that comes from China, will be framed in that in that Positive in that light, lens. Light for China. Yeah, so it's fucking scary. Um, and basically, so it, the letter goes through with everything and says, um, as China amplifies its campaign of intimidation, you and your company must decide whether to look beyond the bottom line and promote American values like freedom of speech and thought or to give in to Beijing's demands in order to preserve market access. We urge you in the strongest terms to reconsider your decision with expect, with respect to Mr. Chung. You have the opportunity to reverse the course. We urge you to take it. Yeah. And then um, it's signed by um, five five different members of Congress. The two most notable ones, Marco Rubio, who 
Republican that ran mm-hmm. up against Trump in the um, Republican primaries in 2016, right. and Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, who a is prominent Democrat, one of the most the one of the newest and most prominent Democrats uh, acolyte of Bernie Sanders, yeah. basically. Yeah, but yeah, um, so that is fucking huge. <laughs> just just like, looking at the picture right now, mm. just very random little note to make is look at her signature. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's just loose. I, I'm saying it because I actually like it. It's uh, everyone, everyone has well, these kind of like, like squiggly. The thing is AOC, right? So yeah. it's, it's like an A and then an O so, and then a C. I, I, yeah. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it like, just stands out from the rest of them. The others are just like normal generic signatures. It's just like this cool little loopy well, signature. The, the, Anywho, the, the, it looks like the, says, the other one. The, it looks like it says oop. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry about that. That was just a. Random little shit. Just want to say, most of them, I think, uh, three of them are white men. So, you yeah, know, that's one thing. <laughs> the other one is a prominent Republican, and then you have a woman of color. Then, so, there's, yeah. you know, there's a reason there's a difference, which is a good difference. Yeah. <laughs> that's why all those signatures look the same. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping out of the um, the gaming side of mm. things, yes. um, Hong Kong's riots, they started off as a, a bit of background for everybody that doesn't mm. know. Mm. They started off as a. Um, a protest against a particular extradition bill. Correct. Um, which has since been withdrawn. And then the protests continued as a means to release the protests, protesters that were arrested, as well as yes. to, to um, talk, well, to give awareness, I guess, or whatever, to um, police brutality, human rights abuses, and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So what started as one just thing. one bill that, you know, was just another creeping example of Chinese influence in Hong Kong yeah. has turned into this huge Much shit show thing. and it has been going on. This isn't like... Oh, this, they haven't the been protesting been... for like like a month. It's been going on for six to eight months. Yeah. yeah. Protests. yeah. Um, it has been my, a big, big It's event. been escalating. Yeah. There was photos recently as well of um, showing people uh, chain... Like, the uh, Chinese... Someone apparently that was supposed to be a Hong Kong riot police officer who is definitely not. It is a squadron of the Chinese military. Mm. (laughs) And you can see them because they are changing out of their Chinese military attire into into Hong Kong riot gear. They're like, yeah, so, oh, you know, it's just the Hong Kong police trying to enforce Hong Kong narrative is complete bullshit. The Chinese Um, are in Hong Kong trying to enforce this. So just to to an earlier point as well, to what Ryan just said now, how this is a much bigger deal. And it's been going on for quite some time. Mm. It is a big part of why this specific news around um, Blizzard and Hong Kong and China and whatnot Mm. has gotten the momentum that it's gotten. Because if it was a one-off thing to say, oh, this guy just randomly said, hey, I'm supporting a situation that people just didn't really know about in the first place. Mm. It would have gotten some traction. and be like, shit, they still did a shitty thing. But this is a big deal. It's not a, a small misdemeanor or a small issue that hong kong is facing it is a big issue no. and a lot of people i have been fighting for a long time about it now but the thing um, is and the an and, ongoing and thing. the thing is like you know it, it frustrates me to think about like you know people like bobby kotick rubbing their hands together and be like well we got to make money off every fucking person we possibly can yeah. mm. we've got a where 20 percent we got a 20 percent uh, uh, income stake from people, china and, these yeah. people are in hong kong and they're it's not hyperbole these people's lives depend on what they're doing mm. like they are facing extreme hardship and for people to be like, but I really like money. Like, it should just tell you how how scummy these people are. Really. Reminds, reminds me of a meme I saw, um, like, uh, completely unrelated to, to Hong Kong, but it was like um, adults, um, you know, teenagers shouldn't vote because they don't have long, they don't think yeah, long term, they don't have a good attention span. Um, teenagers, okay, well then, can you please um, look after the um, environment and stop climate change? Adults, no, no. because I really like my short-term <laughs> oil money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Another one I saw was something along the lines of, um, uh, you shouldn't get a tattoo. You should think about the long-term impacts that will have on your life. And it was like, okay, you shouldn't screw up the economy or something along the lines. Yeah, stop, the stop screwing, or something. screwing up, screwing with the environment for our future. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah. Again, this is a very uh, dicey topic, very touchy topic. 
if you do feel strongly about it and want to weigh in in any means or feel free to add something in the comments but more more useful jump onto our discord and there's a lot of this conversation we can have chinese bots after this in our discord well, let's find out oh, yeah. <laughs> don't worry we have a moderator <laughs> hey this guy yeah. i think we'll all be able to tell who the chinese bots are <laughs> I think it'll be definitely pretty simple. not china <laughs> <laughs> hey china is still cool <laughs> you pay later um, um okay so let, let's kind of change the the direction of this podcast let's finish the podcast a more, on a happier note a happier note a lighter note something that we've kind of been quite surprised and impressed by yeah so for anyone again anyone that's been on the internet except for lady gaga apparently knows <laughs> fortnite um fortnite is quite possibly one of the most popular games in recent history let's just say the most popular games in re- recent yeah. history millions of people play it millions of people continue to play it um consistently and the, in it in of itself has had issues and whatnot but in the last week or so i believe it was mm. um they actually shut the game down shut the game down and in most cases what happens is when a game goes down server issues or whatever it causes a lot of issues causes a lot of problem but what fortnite has done amazingly this time around is they've made it part of the game they have introduced uh they're, they're basically bringing them around their next season or well, not season they have well, had this season. is the 10th season 10th season but they're introducing new mechanics they're introducing new maps this is effectively a sequel to a game of what you would think but in in true games as a service style that it's just going to be fortnite plus plus Round two. <laughs> like, yeah. it is a massive update effectively so instead of the usual so hey guys sorry down for maintenance we hang tight lots of cool things coming they've made it a part of the story to say hey this black hole has appeared it has sucked the entire map the entire world the into game it. the whole thing the whole game and the, the again the cool thing about it is if you were playing the game at the time you would have witnessed that. You would have been involved in that shutdown. Um, and so w- to kind of try to put some more information into the mm. mix, w- is there a specific amount of time that it's down for? Have they announced? They that? haven't announced when it's coming. They said it is coming. But it, it, exactly but right. The thing is, like, it's it's hype at the moment because, like, obviously the game's down and everyone's, like, refreshing. It's, it can't be more than two weeks, I'd say. I Yeah, I can't imagine. Because after a while, people get bored. Gets, go, they lose that hype well, and people just get there's already a trailer. Correct. So up. what it is, is they've just used a means of refreshing their whole I'm game. i see if it's up. But somehow managing to keep people interested and excited or even built more excitement for the game by tying in that this maintenance or this downtime it's like a relaunch the right they're, 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 they're relaunching the game correct so what I was saying to the guys earlier on is a bunch of games actually do this regularly like you mentioned Team Fortress 2 they are regularly relaunching and introducing well, not relaunching but <laughs> introducing new new things yeah not, um, not so much uh, this so year but what, last it, few years like it, been the thing is it's back already like Fortnite Chapter 2 is already up oh there, oh, you, go. there you go yeah it's already up so yeah, um, we're just showing a video on Twitter. Yeah, I think it was down for like of it, of it a pulling, couple of days. Yeah. Right? yeah, it was down for a couple of days of it pulling out and then the map dropping in and then you're like, okay, everything's back. There you go. Yeah. Um, so the likes of Apex Legends, yeah. the likes of Overwatch, they introduce new characters, they introduce new maps all they, the time. They tweak features, they tweak guns, you know. They do, like, this is what happens uh, in a games as a service. Any sort, any sort of service-based game, it's a constant thing. But... Fortnite, I, I, I think this is probably the first time I've seen it, where mm. they've just gone, whole thing's down, but it's part of the story. Hang tight. And it just has people excited about it. It yeah. has me excited. I don't play this game. Yeah. <laughs> like, I tried playing it once for like half an hour, and I was just like, no, nah, not for me. But just the concept of how they've done this and how they've implemented mm. it has just been really impressive. It's just a very cool way of, of doing games as a service. And because... It's so common that, um, you know, the, these these games as a service um, exist now. Mm. And quite often, as we've seen this year with possibly the worst games as a service game to come out in recent memory, uh, Anthem, sorry to say, <laughs> um, 
like a lot, a lot of these games are like a half baked and not done well and mm. released incomplete and they're just like oh we'll fix it we'll fix it but and and as much as people like to joke about Fortnite and to say like it's just full of you know 8 year old children and you know no one gives a shit about it and it's a meme to actually like playing Fortnite the fact is that they're doing really cool stuff this and is like this is a really cool way to do a game as a service you if you're going to do the game as a service you might as well do, do this well. way to invigorate your player base you know what it mm. reminds me of yeah remember when tv shows uh they used to end uh on a cliffhanger yeah mm. that's exactly yeah. what happened right? exactly right except instead of having to wait six months for the next season you waited 48 hours the thing is and you you and the thing was though it was amazing because they didn't tell you when it was coming back up no yeah. no one fucking knew that is so everyone's shit sitting there was watching down. the screen and but the thing is and it's even smart because imagine if you had to do a two-day update mm. and you had to bring everything down um you you actually going to be taking a th- days of revenue oh, away yeah. from all of your streamers and Correct. all your partners that work with you promoting your game so downtime it hurts it's bad for it hurts everybody everyone bad for everybody so what they did though this event people were still streaming and they were just streaming the fucking black hole yeah <laughs> and just just doing like the just chatting basically yeah. mm-hmm. and just talking to their fans and waiting waiting and waiting. talking and watching the the, the hole for like a hours yeah. at and, a time and again and the thing is because so you don't know kept, when it's coming back yeah so the thing is those people still kept their revenue going mm. they still like so all the streamers streamers people were streaming Fortnite like watching Fortnite more than they were before <laughs> and they I were was just, saying before. just looking at a black hole yeah <laughs> yeah so oh. everyone won they got Fortnite got publicity the people streaming the game had content and then the, a new thing came out and it like invigorated the player base. Yeah. The Twitch numbers have been steadily dropping this Climbing. entire year. Mm. Yeah. And this has just fucking boosted them. And like, it's just such a smart it's just move very, to do. Very you know what well I, done. I was saying earlier, yeah. you, remember, um, you know what it reminded me of? Mm. It's mm. like that moment in the Truman Show when they don't know where Truman is, right? Mm. And everyone's running around like mad, like in the, in the studio and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And the execs come down and they're like, where is he? You got to find him. You got to find him. And then like, the guy that like, like the producer runs the show, he's like, why? We're getting better ratings with this graphic than we've ever had on the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a graphic it's saying, a- technical difficulties, please stand by. Yeah, and everyone's like, people what's have, happened? People yeah. have tuned well, in is, waiting to, fig- to uh, see what's happened. And the yeah. reason Fortnite was a bit of a joke, in my opinion, was because it's just this constant. It's mm. that Fortnite will be there. Fortnite is a huge game that everyone plays and it, you know... It, it it never looked like it was not going to be mm. the number one game, you know? Yeah. Um, well, play, you know, when League was the number one game. Well, no, or, no, you know, but, anyway. no, for the last, the last like, yeah. however long, the yeah. last couple of years, yeah. it's been just, just Fortnite all the based. time. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, ever since it came out, it's just been number one, number yeah. one, number one. It hasn't stopped being number it's, one. So, yeah. Or for a few instances of like a game launches and then you know someone someone people Spikes. the one week where people played Apex more than more than more Fortnite, than Fortnite but then it um, faded but yeah. so but the funny thing is though is that like it, it's it's this huge global constant across the world and all of a sudden now by disrupting that mm. that's when people like wait what yeah. like, it, it, like because it's such a jarring thing yeah. it draws again. people in yeah. it's the whole idea about the yeah the Truman Show of like. You know the Truman Show's on, it's so on, no one's always on. So no one, so no you really... might you might flick on and be like, yeah, I'll just see what's on. You yeah. know, I'll see watch the Truman Show for it's a like, bit. I'll know... watch I'll watch someone street Fortnite for like thirty minutes, and then I'll fuck off. Like, but it. now yeah. you're going to be like, I am waiting I'm for curious. this thing. You're I'm curious, right? Yeah, you, it's, you it's pick back up people's in. curiosity. It's, it's like honestly, it's like so smart. It's like when people you know huddle around like a crime scene or like a you know, car crash. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's just... something out of the norm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So so just to to that point as well, like. If this becomes normalized, then yeah, that's that was going to be my question. Now that, that Fortnite cool. has done this, will every other I hope so service be like? I mean, not let's obviously. tying our maintenance into some form of story. Let's tie it in somehow to. Get I mean, people I don't think they're always going to be able to tie every maintenance it's drop gonna, people yeah, have. Yeah, but in saying that though, I think that there's like a the whole bunch things. of really creative things mm. that you can do with games as a service. Correct. Yeah. There's these really like these kind of organically growing stories. Yeah. And there's a lot of room for really smart, really innovative storytelling and, in there. And, I and the thing is, people aren't doing that at the moment because it's a big money maker, yeah. And people don't really give a shit, like like Ubisoft or like you know like Activision with that they just want their 
They want their game. Yeah. They want they want their games as a service game in their lineup. Ubisoft wants their games as a service in their lineup. Yeah. Every major publisher needs their their one game that they can just consistently keep yeah, drawing like money from, from from the people. I yeah. think the act of, of just really suddenly taking the game down and being like something new is coming in forty eight hours. Yeah. That'll get old quick. If they can yes, if, 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 if other companies try and go or jump on that bandwagon. Oh, I think it's because it's yeah. Fortnite that, they, that it works so well. Oh, they no, 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 I mean, like, Fortnite is down. <laughs> I, I realize that. My, yeah. my my point is like even if it wasn't Fortnite, imagine like Imagine the new Call of Duty came out and it was like it was top of the top of the game again, right? Mm-hmm. Whatever. And then in a year's time, instead of releasing a new Call of Duty game, they take that that game down for forty eight hours and going. By the way, something's coming. Right? Yeah. People, people are like, like, oh, that's what Fortnite. That's did. what Fortnite, Fortnite did. did. You, oh, of course. you can't just do the exact well, same thing. You're not going to do the same thing, but, but there's there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's smarter I, stories that you can tell with events now with exactly. live events. Imagine the, the concept of having. Whoever the fuck is playing on that server, witness a live event. That event happens once and only once. Yeah. And I think some they they said that some of the partners met a lot of the, the prominent Fortnite streamers were given a heads like up a of heads like, up. hey, something will be happening today around this time. Make sure try you to be s- online. Make sure you're streaming try, that try, day because yeah. everyone was fucking streaming yeah. in that moment because it's fantastic marketing. Yeah. yeah. Um. So they didn't I, know I what was going to happen, I, but they knew that something was what, happening. What I'm hopeful for here is that. This will exactly right. Will mm. encourage others to be more creative about how they handle these things. Yeah. Um. One thing I've called out before when when Fortnite first began became a big deal mm. and it was like comparing it to other battle royales, uh, uh, PUBG. PUBG and whatnot. Mm. And going, a lot of people thought PUBG is much better. This is a cheap rip. Cheap rip off. Well, so the thing is, because for 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 what happened was Fortnite was originally a tower defense, yes. right? and they pivoted and then, because of the popularity of exactly Battle right. But yeah. the thing is, and what I called out before, and what I really like about the way that um, Epic, Epic, Epic are handling it, is they're very creative in yeah. how. So they've gone, oh shit, this is a popular genre now. What can we do differently, and what yeah. can we do well? And well, every well, they they the, the, like they're just constantly introducing new. Tiny little tweaks here and there. They do also steal things that work from other games. They They're do. like, hey, Every- Apex Legends launched and people... That game's okay, mm. but people love the fucking ping system in that. Yeah. Let's take yeah, that. Let's take that. <laughs> like, that's, yep. that's, that's the thing. Everybody does that though. Like, oh, yeah. You see a... You can't do copyright a system well? like it's that. Like when we covered, someone, it's some- like... It's mm. like when we covered the PUBG Fortnite um, lawsuit and then they were talking about the, the fry the pan. Fry I'm pan. like, the fry pan's yeah. been in Team Fortress and like Half-Life for like Ever. yonks. Yeah. yeah. Right? So it's just like, they take things that mm. are well established yeah. and just do it well yeah. like but they do it differently enough that it's not just going oh shit i'm just playing pubg again no or, they're, or, oh, shit i'm doing they're, this they're, again. They're, they're, they innovate it well enough and like introduce enough dynamic to it that's exciting well but, that, but actually it's funny you say that because you know, we, we had a little quick look at screenshots and stuff before we started this podcast and you brought up the, the medallions that they're adding mm. yeah fortnite 2 or whatever you know what that reminded me of mm. halo like the whole you know pentacle and like oh, all yeah, that yeah, sort yeah, of shit yeah, that's yeah. what it reminded me of the yeah. big yeah. Shoo, again that's nothing new it's yeah it's yeah. not again apex legend has they introduced something similar not too long ago mm. where it's like you have your levels but you also have event levels or something like that yeah, so yeah. some other form of tracking mechanism which yeah. gives you rewards which gives you more things as well so it's not new they're just doing it I their just, own way I just, yeah. what I do like as well I think it's interesting that the Fortnite is the one kind of leading the charge on these this really innovative games as a service kind mm-hmm. of events where when you look at the world they have it's literally just a multiplayer game oh, yeah. it's just it's a map that you drop in on and you fight on that's yeah. it there's yep. no fucking storyline. Like, there, there the doesn't is, have to be a storyline. There's games like Anthem. There's games like Fallout. There's all these games that are based in the, the you that people want to buy and play it because they want to be invested in the world. In the, in the yes. world no one story. gives a fuck about the world of Fortnite. No. But people, people buy into the world of Fallout. Yeah. And somehow, Fallout... And and act and and Fallout and Anthem, Anthem. aren't doing these things, yes. Yes. and Fortnite is, yeah. and it's, it's just, just fucking mind bending. The, the, like, the thing is, right? The thing is, it's not even new. Like, okay, <laughs> like sports games, right? Mm. Yeah, sports games have like daily events and like, like you know weekly events. Yeah, and, yeah. and I, if I, I mean, again, I'm not a sports game player, but I did hear somewhere that like real injuries that happen in real life yeah. get fed into the game. So, that's, so like if that's, if like yeah, if like I was, I, know, that that FIFA. FIFA. I was explaining that with FIFA. If you're watching the game and fucking back. Messi gets injured, you're like, oh fuck! So like, yeah, <laughs> you, you can... Messi's gonna be injured in my fucking game next week. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, not necessarily, <laughs> okay. but yeah. like what it does is it feeds in the player's form, how yes. well they're that's doing, really and stuff good. like that. Into yeah, that's, that's fucking like, great. But that's the thing, right? That that's it's that sort of uh, real that's life really interaction cool. with the game mm. that keeps it interesting, right? It's like, oh shit, you know, Messi's injured. Injured. Oh, yeah. Okay, crap. You know, you know, that's um. So no, but your point around why are. Why is games Fortnite that are actually yeah. supposed to be drawing people in based on the story, not the ones that are driving this? Like, I don't know. So when Anthem first got released, and they were talking about how they're going to have those cataclysm events and whatnot, they had that one. sounded amazing. They, had one. Like, they did have they the did one. They did have one. Okay, eventually, it, amazing. it wasn't it was very just good. Like, apparently, holy shit! This I, is... I've stopped playing that a long time ago. It's like holy shit! This this is amazing. Like you you've told us obviously, but that's that's cool. But to know that we're going to be playing this game and the way that things are going to change in this yeah. game is this story-based massive Well, they, they did... It's, yeah, to be fair to Anthem, they did actually have what we're discussing. Mm. They did have that in they their just, roadmap. Having said that, they threw, fucking threw their roadmap out because they couldn't make deadlines they, because they couldn't ship a base product correctly. <laughs> so, like, you know... Yeah, well, that that and the fact no one played it. Yeah, because of the, sh- the game was shit. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the game was also garbage. I know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rotating circle of garbage, right? Yeah. So, no mm. one played it. It, because it was crap and it was crap because no one played it and then no one kept playing it and yeah, yeah well, they, the mechanics were shallow and so i i played a shitload of it and then i was like i'm tired i'm already I'm grinding and apparently i have another 50 percent till i get to max level like i'm halfway through yeah but i've already and finished the main story and it. there's nothing else to do yeah. so i have to grind another fucking 20 levels or yeah. something that was like with nothing no with content nothing that was, was like, like that was like me why with, um, i don't care that was like me with um borderlands yeah. one even like i finished like, the main story i'm like cool now why play it again yeah. but this time <laughs> yeah. you start at the level you finished on like great okay thanks i'm gonna yeah. put this down now yeah um, but that's the thing like if a game like that had been like oh shit there's like you know content coming in a month right like there's gonna be some major event that happens in game you know mm. hyperion's invading or something you know what i mean like, yeah yeah but i find it interesting when they instead of like like say Destiny, hmm. they have an expansion. Destiny's actually been doing very well re- recently, but Destiny say, Two or Destiny Two, yeah. yeah. So they have a new ex- they have new expansion out, hmm. and when you buy the expansion, you see the cutscene, and then you play the first mission, and you play the storyline, and like that, that is a very normal way to play. That's more MMO, yeah. and that's not really going to change. Yeah. But what is funny is that when you have these kind of like persistent world games which which a lot of those MMOs don't have because yeah. you can go back and do missions but, yeah. where these persistent world games like like something you've done has changed like the world out, more like Fallout yeah drop a fucking live event in yes and encourage people that listen if you want to see this you have to be playing all the time yeah you have yeah. to be playing all the time you have to be playing during the event yeah right well, in, in that during the start of the event, for a five minutes, mm. you need to be logged into Fortnite to yeah. see this. Yeah. Like, in a game. Like, that is... that's And they get to do that kind of stuff because they have so many people active. Yeah. yeah. But in saying that, though, like, that is a cool way to enforce the fact that you should play this game for every fucking second. Yeah. That, like, you never you know, don't know what's what going to happen. Like, you might miss out. And that's, you a, might that's miss out. a big, big marketing <laughs> yeah, ploy. It's yeah. that, was it, FOMO? FOMO, Fear yeah. Missing Fear out. missing out. It's very like, good. It just works so goddamn effectively. So goddamn effectively. For a fucking free-to-play game. Yeah. Like, Fortnite, it just, they just do... Well done. Well done, Epic. It's just, it's honestly amazing. Like... I, very well done. Even if I'm like, are you going to play Fortnite? No, no. It's like, God, no. Absolutely I, I have zero interest in no, it. I'm, I'll be, I am impressed. <laughs> I'll be garbage at it. Um... I guess the, the, the question I kind of want to throw out to the anyone listening as well is, is there any game that you're playing that you wish would kind of reinvigorate in, in a similar manner? Or has there been any game that you've played that has had, whether it's an event, I don't imagine a lot can have those live events, but have done something that you didn't expect and you're like, holy shit, and it kind of just brought your interest back in, let us know. Um, for me, for, for me, well. I can say mine mm. was Destiny Two for when they launched Forsaken. I was right. like, that was, mm. that was impressive. Well, they immediately played a trail and they showed the, everyone's favorite character getting murdered, Dead. and I was like, yeah. what the f- yeah. fuck are you doing? Yes. <laughs> like, that's right. No, I was like, oh no, there's no fucking secret. He he He's, dead. He dead. He dead. Very dead. He ain't coming <laughs> back. Like, Right. Is he gonna come back? No. No. <laughs> this isn't an anime. They don't just magically come back. Okay. It's fucking great. Um, He'll probably come back in three expansions and everyone will fucking cream their pants. Yeah. This will be great. <laughs> um so we've been yeah. going a little bit over an hour now. Um I think we'll start to to wind this little yes. conversation down. Um to, to to do that, is there anything you guys want to leave our lovely audience with? 
to I think um, run off into the sunset. I think the big thing, the next big thing for me, I really want to see uh, the new Terminator movie. Yes. Um, so I am very, very opinionated when it comes to <laughs> what, which Terminator movies and or TV shows are good. Because it's very uh, hot and cold with that series. It is very, Some very, are great, some are garbage. Very, very hit and miss. Um, so Terminator 1, Terminator 2 are uh, widely regarded as being the best. Yeah, that's true. Um, my next in line of that is Terminator Sarah Connor Chronicles. Yeah, I was about to say Sarah Connor Chronicles. Yep. yep. Um, Terminator 3, Salvation, Genesis are all garbage as far as I'm a kid. As far as I'm... Three, I remember Salvation was the future. Yes, and Genesis, Genesis. is the recent one. What was... Time this? travel. They're well, the whole thing, travel, they're all time travel. No, well, okay, this is more time travel. <laughs> No, so, so there's an Arnie, there's an Arnie from, there's a good Arnie versus evil Arnie. Right. It's Genesis. Long story uh, short, they, they yeah. actually send someone it's back again Arnie's. to the 80s. And then so they're bring, trying to relive bring Sarah two Connor, again, effectively. They, yeah, and then they bring Sarah Connor into the future. But it's not the future where it's apocalyptic. They want to try and stop the new, the new Skynet, which is a system called Genesis, which, oh, by the way, is, a, is attached to everyone's smartphones. And oh my God, you haven't heard of the internet before? Like, like it's very... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's very a dig at Apple, a dig at you know uh, like, online culture, and yeah, yeah all that. So it's it's crap. <laughs> um, <laughs> the reason why I'm excited or you know cautiously optimistic for this movie, mm. James Cameron's back, who is yep. the director of the one and two, one and two. Yep. Uh, and Linda Hamilton is back as Sarah Connor. The, so Grandma a, Connor. There's, basically, there's one shot. I was like. I, I remember you saying, oh, you, the, anyone want to see Terminator? And I, my initial reaction was, fuck no. <laughs> and yeah. then and then I think I think you posted yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, there's a press shot mm. of, of, of Sarah, Sarah Connor, Connor in like her outfit. And yeah. I was just like, that looks, cool. yeah, that looks fucking cool. Yeah, right? And I was like, I was like, <laughs> like right. wow, okay. The thing yeah. is, because I've, I've, right. like, I've, like I've got like Arnie and Linda Hamilton like liked on like on Facebook, right? So <laughs> that, it actually popped up, mm. right? Like it popped up and I was like, Holy shit! This this looks good. This looks good. Like, I was I was I, gonna, I thought he was gonna finish that sentence with the he has the Linda Hamilton tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> right on the butt cheek, right on the butt, right on the butt. No, um, yeah. I, 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 anyway, the point is, um, I saw that like, they've, been, they've been doing promo Fuck. stuff. Like they, I mm. saw like they were at like the awards or something, and they were you know chatting together like Arnie and and Linda. Mm. Um, and then Linda Hamilton posted that. Like that press photo, I guess, or of her. I guess maybe we can put it in the thing. Adam, yeah. remember to put this in the thing. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it's, it, it is it is an excellent shot, um, and it, it would be fair use for us to use it because we are critiquing it. So huh, yeah, okay. fair <laughs> use. Take that, YouTube. Um, <laughs> great photo, and mm. looks like a good movie, and I'm I'm keen to see it. Um, so. I saw the trailer. I went to watch Joker last week. Fuck, I was gonna say I, I haven't seen that Joker. Movie. I've been away. I've been overseas and yeah. I haven't been able to see it and I'm really keen. I, I went to watch Joker. The new Terminator movie trailer came before it. I was like, I was, it was a mix, mix, mix okay. emotions for me Maybe. because it was like, things about it looked exciting, like you've been saying, mm-hmm. but then things about it looked a little eh as uh, well. If, if it's a trailer that I saw, I think a YouTube comment summed it up quite well. It's like, well, I don't need to see the movie anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those trailers where they it give shows away a you lot everything. Of, um, I think that's points. because they're, 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 they're generally that they're so nervous about like, we, we think people will mm. automatically write this movie off. Yeah. So we have to basically show them show, everything that happens the so they'll go and see it. And you'll be like, the, well, I yeah. know like they fucking do that all the time. Yeah. But yeah. it's the same thing um, uh, Justice League did. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And right. Batman vs Superman. Yeah. They're like, we're going to show the coolest bits because this movie either A sucks or B, we're worried that we're no one will see people it. People won't want to come see it. And now um, you just turn off the people that want to see it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. yeah. So, yeah, there was just things about it. Like, they, they, they leaned heavily on the whole um, Terminator 2 Melty. Oh yeah, so they've got they've got oh, a hybrid. They've got is uh, he back? Not the, not, not, ex- not the same guy. No, but not, they, yeah. they they lean heavily on that concept, and I was just like, mm, liquid like, metal. That's cool. And then just little bits of it, I was just like, I haven't seen it. I'll okay. take a like, trailer. Again, excited, but at the same time going, eh, that's okay. <laughs> I have something um, very short. I don't want to get into it but, too much. Okay, just yeah, before you do that, Joker. Watch the Joker. Okay, I am a big fan. I was very happy with that. Okay, we, cool. we probably should have talked about that. I think nah. not so much about the movie, but about the way the media portrayed yeah. it. Anyway, besides yeah. that, besides <laughs> that point, Adam, but yeah, that's that's my thing. The Joker. Everyone gotcha. needs to watch the new season 
of Big Mouth. Yes, I've already seen it. Oh, you've already seen it. it? Fantastic. Is fantastic. It's very good. It is it's very fantastic. Good. Um, the episode, well, it's episode two technically because like the one that came out like six months yeah, ago was the Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, one. Day was, is now made that episode one. Is now episode Season one. Three, yes. So, but so episode two. I it had to pause from. the episode because I was just tears rolling down my face. Um, I won't spoil anything, but it is the hardest I've Happy ever laughed. Happy tears or sad? Oh, how? Happy. Happy. Uh, it is the just hardest hilarious. I have ever laughed at a thing. Like, just just straight. Uh, like, I, I couldn't stop myself. Like, Leah had to t- come in multiple times to tell me to be quiet. Like, so, I was laughing hell up, so dude. loudly <laughs> in the loud room. <laughs> you insane it's son of a bitch. It's fucking great. It yeah. is so good. It is better than... It's, it's already better than the other seasons. And they do it every time. I don't know how they consistently raise the bar, but they do. It's great. It's Please fantastic. watch it. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, my God. Cool. I think on that note, we can wrap it up. So, oh. as per usual, thank you very much for sitting through our waffles. And our rants. Um, we should really have waffles. Yeah. <laughs> have a waffle podcast. Now, our next yeah. podcast is just us eating waffles. Um, as per usual, please check out some of our other stuff on YouTube. Um, jump onto Discord. That's probably our main means of keeping in touch and in communication with our lovely, lovely community. Um, I mean, if you leave a comment, we'll still respond. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll um, see it. We'll still respond. We'll still see it. <laughs> just if there's anything you want to discuss, anything you interested in um anything you want to weigh in on from our podcast conversations or any other conversations we have on discord just jump in feel free to put in your two cents um we're we're always happy to hear from you guys um but yeah other than that we'll we'll leave it there so thank you very much and we'll see you guys next time bye bye Bye.